ಶ್ವೇತಾಶ್ವತರೋಪನಿಷದ್ ಅಧ್ಯಾಯ ತ್ರೀ ಮಂತ್ರ ಸೆವೆನ್ ತತ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪರಂ ಬೃಹಂತ ಯಥಾಕಾಯೂತು ಗೂಢಂ ವಿಶ್ವಸ್ಯಕಂ ಪರಿವೇಷ್ಟಿ ಈಶಂತಮೃತಿ jnana is the way to amritatva amritatva is another word for moksha amritatva literally means freedom from death freedom from mritam mritam means a death mrityu in the vedanta mrityu is used as an upalakshana for samsara upalakshana means a representative suppose somebody says i have many headaches what does it mean headache headache stands for problems not necessarily the physical headache so many headaches so headache is used as an upalakshana for problems even in our day to day conversation likewise in vedanta shastra mrityu is used to refer to samsara as in kathopanishad we see mrityo samrityo maapnoti ya iha naneva pasyati one who sees many nana one who sees duality he goes from death to death mrityo samrityo maapnoti as long as dvaita is real for us we are not free from samsara and that is the meaning of the statement there samsara is called by the word mrityu so freedom from mrityu freedom from death means freedom from samsara 
not the physical death not just death in fact freedom from samsara includes freedom from death also because when do we die when we are born as long as we have birth we will have death also moksha means freedom from both birth and death no more birth and no more death how to accomplish it the shastra says jnana is the way jnatva amrita bhavanti knowledge leads to moksha brahma jnana is the way to moksha and while describing this the upanishad describes the glory of brahman tatah param all these are descriptions of brahman tatah means jagatah param brahman transcends the jagat since jagat is a lesser reality brahman transcends jagat therefore ततः परम जगतः परम ब्रह्म परम ब्रह्मण हिण्यगर्भा परम द वर्ड ब्रह्म इज यूज्ड फॉर हिण्यगर्भ हिण्यगर्भ इज आल्सो कॉल्ड ब्रह्म समटाइम्स the parabrahma or paramatma is greater than hiranyagarbha also even hiranyagarbha is born from the brahma from the brahma therefore brahma param greater than hiranyagarbha transcends hiranyagarbha even hiranyagarbha is within the domain of samsara by performing certain types of karma one can even get the position of hiranyagarbha but even the position of hiranyagarbha is within the domain of samsara because even hiranyagarbha is subject to a destruction subject to resolution brahantam brahat 
बृहत् मीन्स इन्फिनिट फ्री फ्रॉम लिमिटेशन जस्ट लाइक बृहद बेंगलूर अर्लियर देर वॉज अ स्मॉल बेंगलूर जस्ट बी देन इट बिकेम बी बी बृहत् बेंगलूर हाउ इट बिकेम बृहत् ए स्टार्टेड स्वालोविंग ऑल द विलेजस् नियर बै many nearby places got swallowed swallowed up even some lakes got swallowed up matti kere this kere that kere names are kere but the kere is swallowed up what i mean to say brihat means it is inclusive it includes so many things in it likewise when we say brahman is brihat even the jagat is included in brahman the jagat does not exist apart from brahman every name and form is included in brahman that is how it is brihat see previous two words talked about the transcendent nature of brahman whereas this word brihat implies the immanence of brahman it includes everything pervades everything as the very satta existence yatha nikayam sarva bhuteshu gudham sarva bhuteshu gudham the brahman is hiding in every being it is present in every being and it is hiding in every being gudham it is hiding as the very self brahman is the atma the very self being the self it is hiding in fact the safest way to hide is to be within when it is your own self it is hiding there is a story there was a princess this princess was supposed to get married when she reached a certain age 
25 or 20 i don't know 23 24 at that age the parents asked the girl to get married then this princess said i will conduct a test only those who pass the test can marry me one who passes the test it is like a swayamvara in ramayana and mahabharata we have seen swayamvaras even arjuna married draupadi pandavas married draupadi through a swayamvara there are some kind of challenge they have to look down and shoot a fish the eye of a fish which is revolving above that was the challenge and uh, the challenge involves first of all lifting the bow the bow has to be lifted and uh, you have to tie the what's it called the string even that is difficult then you have to look down in the water you have to see the image the reflection and shoot the shoot the eye of the fish which is rotating it is revolving not steady and many people tried duryodhana tried karna tried of course karna was not given an opportunity that's a different thing duryodhana tried many other people tried then finally arjuna could do it that is the story of mahabharata no likewise this princess said that there will be a swayamvara and she chose the test what is the test she will sit on a throne on a big chair and she had a lens she had a lens if she sees through the lens she can see everything around it can see even through the walls and any other uh, obstacles it is like an x-ray vision so after sitting on the throne for a while the princess will be blindfolded then this gentleman the candidate he will be given some time to hide himself is a hide and seek then the prince uh, once the person hides the blindfolding will be removed and then the princess will look uh, you know will take the lens and uh, try to find where this person is hiding in 360 degree it can show her and if the person is found he has lost if the person is not found then the princess he won that that candidate won then the princess has to marry him this was the challenge then many people started coming candidates so many qualified kings and so many rich men so many warriors 
दे ऑल केम एंड दे टुक द टेस्ट बट दिस प्रिंसेस को डिटेक्ट एवरी वन समबड़ी हिड इन द किचन समबड़ी हिड इन सम अदर प्लेस इन द पैलेस बट द प्रिंसेस कुड लोकेट ईच वन विद हर लेंस विद हर मैजिक लेंस बट देन सो मेनी पीपल फेल्ड इट वेंट ऑन फॉर डेज then after a long time one beggar came a beggar who is very ugly looking lame that kind of a beggar came and they asked him why have you come then the beggar said i want to take the test i have come for the swayamvara uh, then the princess was very confident this beggar is anyway not going to win so many people have tried and lost so what is wrong in giving him a chance anyway he is not going to win then the princess sat on her throne and she was blindfolded then this uh, gentleman was asked to hide they counted 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 or uh, in our you know culture we have some songs also in hide and seek we have a song कण्णा मुच्चे काडे कूडे सो देन दिस जेंटलमैन हिड हिमसेल्फ देन समबडी सेड रेडी नाउ इट्स टाइम टू ओपन द आईज एंड द प्रिंसेस आईज वेर ओपन and then she took the lens to find this person she tried to see 360 degrees in all 360 degrees this person was not found no the princess was really palpitating is not found then finally after trying for a while the princess gave up she accepted her defeat she announced okay i am lost you won after the princess declared her defeat this beggar came from under her chair <laughs> so the beggar was very proximate to this princess right under her chair and he was very sure that she is not going to find him with her lens she saw everywhere outside 360 degree and it was not to be found she he was not to be found likewise our senses see outside our senses and our mind they are engaged outside परांचिखा निव्यतृणत स्वयं भूहु अव माइंड इज बिजी लुकिंग आउटसाइड 
that is why we miss the atma who is sitting inside right in our heart as the very self therefore sarva bhuteshu gudham it is hiding yatha nikayam the atma is present in us and it seems to take the form of this body as the brahadaranya kopanishad says anakhagrebhya see the vedanta shastra vedanta shastra talks about an all pervasive consciousness the consciousness is present everywhere it is all pervasive but in our experience we feel a localized presence of consciousness we experience a localized presence of consciousness why the consciousness seems to be localized why the consciousness seems to be confined to a given place <coughs> even though the consciousness is present everywhere it does not manifest everywhere sada sarvagato pyatma na sarvatra va bhasate even though the atma is everywhere it does not manifest everywhere then where does it manifest it manifests only in our buddhi buddha veva va bhaset it manifests only in our sukshma sharira our mind our senses what makes this distinction let us take the example of the light the light is shining everywhere the same light is falling on this surface and the same light is falling on this surface also but you can see the difference between these two surfaces this surface does not reflect the light whereas this surface it reflects the light reflection is a special quality of some special surface likewise even though the consciousness is everywhere we feel its presence only in the buddhi only in our sukshma sharira because the atma the chaitanya reflects only in the sukshma sharira that is why we feel the sentiency in our mind in our senses and since the mind and senses have pervaded this thula sharira our sukshma sharira pervades this thula sharira therefore we feel the sentiency only within this thula sharira up to the tip of our finger we feel the sentiency therefore the upanishad says 
யதானிகாயம் யதானிகாயம் இட் டேக்ஸ் த ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் த பாடி ஆஸ் தோ in reality it does not take the form it it doesn't have a form but since the sentiency becomes available only in the sthula sharira it seems to have taken the form of the body it is like the space the space seems to have taken the form of any container this bottle the space seems to have taken the form of the bottle the space seems to have taken the form of the room likewise the consciousness seems to take the form of the bodies therefore யதானிகாயம் சர்வூத்தேஷு கூடம் சீம்ஸ் டு பி கன்ஃபைன் டு த பாடி பட் ஈஸ் இட் ரியலி கன்ஃபைன் டு த பாடி த வெரி நெக்ஸ்ட் லைன் ரூல்ஸ் அவுட் விஸ்வசைக்கம் பரிவேஷ்டிதாரம் விஸ்வசரிவேஷ்டிதாரம் ஹீ பர்வேட்ஸ் த விஸ்வா ஹீ பர்வேட்ஸ் எவ்ரி திங் நாட் கன்ஃபைன் டு த பாடி பிரசென்ட் இன்சைட் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் அவுட் சைட் த பாடி அந்தர்பிச்சம் வியாபியாராயணஸ்திஷம் ஏக்கம் ஈஷம் ஹீஸ் ஏக வன் விதவுட் எ செகண்ட் ஈஷம் ஈஸ்வர தம் ஜாத்வா அமிர்தாவந்தி வித் த நாலேஜ் ஆஃப் த ஈஸ்வர வித் த நாலேஜ் ஆஃப் த பிரம்மன் அமிர்தாவந்தி த ஜானீஸ் அட்டைன் மோக்ஷ Mantra 8 Vedaha metam purusham mahantam Aditya varnam tamasaf parastat Tameva viditvati mrityumeti ீவியஸ் மந்திர செட் ஜான ஈஸ் த வே டு மோக்ஷ now one may get a question is jnana the only way to moksha or is there any other way also for moksha then the upanishad rules out all other possibilities there is no other way to moksha there is no parallel way to moksha that can be replaced that can replace jnana
according to some people karma is a way to moksha in fact many philosophers make this claim karma is a way to moksha shankaracharya clarifies why karma cannot become a means for moksha why karma cannot give moksha mainly there are two reasons reason number 1 if karma is the means for moksha that means moksha is a product of karma but any product of karma has to be temporary any effect of karma is temporary whereas moksha cannot be temporary if it is temporary it cannot be called moksha yad yat kritakam tat tad anityam all that is kritaka kritaka means the effect of karma anything that is made of karma anything that is produced by the karma is anityam impermanent time bound this is one reason why karma cannot give moksha yadyat kritakam tat tat anityam then another reason karma goes hand in hand with kartrutva and bhoktrutva doership and enjoyership when i do karma i am reinforcing my doership i am the doer therefore karma goes along with doership and also enjoyership kartrutva and bhoktrutva whereas moksha involves freedom from kartrutva and bhoktrutva moksha is freedom from kartrutva and bhoktrutva freedom from doership and enjoyership therefore the sadhana which reinforces doership and enjoyership cannot be a way to freedom from doership and enjoyership this is another reason why gyan karma cannot be a means for moksha
Now can meditation be a way to moksha? If not karma, somebody says meditation. Meditation is uh, another possibility. In fact, many people nowadays do meditation. Some kind of meditation. So, can meditation lead to moksha? When the karma is ruled out, even meditation is as good as ruled out. Because meditation is also a type of karma. It is manasa karma. That is the only difference. When you meditate, you are not doing anything physically, but you are doing something mentally. It is a manasa karma. Therefore, meditation dhyana is also rolled out. Some people may call it Raja Yoga. There is a four yoga model. Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga. Four yogas. So, Raja Yoga is also a type of karma. Only difference is it is mental karma. You are doing something mentally. Even Raja Yoga is not a way for moksha. Can bhakti lead to moksha? Bhakti yoga. So even bhakti, when you say bhakti, it is also another type of karma. With the, you know, when, when, when you involve emotions, love for Ishvara, and do some actions with the love, it is called bhakti. You do puja with the bhakti. You do namasmaranam with the bhakti. It is also karma only. Therefore, whether it is raja yoga or whether it is bhakti yoga, in a way, it is nothing but karma. Therefore, ruling out the karma rules out all other means. Therefore, only jnana remains as the way. Therefore, the, the Upanishad says, Jnana, Jnanam alone is the way. Nanyaf pantha vidyate yanaya. There is no other way than Jnana. In fact, it is very much reasonable. Because if Ajnana is the cause of samsara, what is the way to be free from samsara? It has to be Jnana. Because nothing can remove Ajnana than Jnana. The darkness can be removed only with the light. Nothing other than light can remove darkness.
Likewise, nothing other than jnana can destroy ajnana. Therefore, there cannot be any other way than jnana. When this is established, one may get another question. Karma cannot give moksha, but can karma give jnana? Can karma give jnana? Here we need some more analysis. What produces a jnana? What is the way to jnana? Any jnana requires a pramana. a means of knowledge, a valid means of knowledge. For example, I want to know the color of this cloth. To know the color, I need a means, a pramana. What is the pramana? my eyes, my chakshurindriya. I have no other way to know the color of this cloth than my eyes. Eyes are the only pramana. I cannot use my ears to know the color. Or uh, without opening my eyes, if I chant some mantra, can I see the color? It is not possible. I have to use my eyes. Chakshuhu. The Chakshurindriya alone is the way to know the color. Rupadarshane Chakshureva Pramanam. Likewise, even to know the Atma Tattva, even to know the Brahman, we need a Praman. And what is the Pramana? The Shastra says, the Pramana to know Brahman is the Vedanta Vakya. Na Veda Vinmanute Tam Brahantam Aupanishadam Brahma Brahman is called Aupanishadam. Aupanishada means known only through Upanishad. Known by means of Upanishad. The Vedanta Vakya functions as a Pramana to know the Brahman. Therefore, to know the Brahman, we should take recourse to the Vedanta, Vedanta Vakya, the words of Vedanta. And if we have to understand the words of Vedanta, What we should do? Tad vijnanartham sa guru meva bhigachet samit panihi shotriyam brahmanishtham. To know the Brahman, one should go to a guru who is a shotriya and brahmanishtha. And the Guru has to teach the Vedanta 
based on the vedanta vakya the guru takes the shishya through a process of vichar a process of inquiry into the teaching of vedanta that is why shankaracharya says in viveka chodamani वस्तु सिद्धिर्विचारेण न किंचित कर्म कोटि भी इवन वस्तु सिद्धि मीन्स ज्ञान वस्तु ज्ञान द नॉलेज ऑफ द रियालिटी हैपन्स ओनली विद द वेदांत विचार ओनली विद द वेदांत शास्त्र therefore the conclusion is karma cannot produce jnana also karma does not produce jnana i will keep doing karma and all of a sudden i will get enlightenment it will not happen so karma is not a means for moksha and karma is not a means for jnana also then what is the role of karma we have discussed in the last session the karma is useful in generating jignasa by cleaning the mind by purifying the mind the karma generates an intense desire for jnana an intense thirst for jnana that is the role of karma and this fact is very clearly explained by sureshwara acharya in his brahadaranya kopanishad vartika based on brahadaranya kopanishad तमे तम वेदाचन ब्राह्मण विविदंती यन दान तपसा नाशक यान तपस् ऑल दीस आर् कर्म एंड द कर्म आर् मेन्ट फॉर विविदंती दे आर् मेन्ट फॉर कलटिवेटिंग एंड इंटेन्स थर्स्ट फॉर आत्मज्ञान it is not possible to get jnana with the casual curiosity many people will have a casual curiosity some people may just walk in what is the swami saying let me just hear a little a casual curiosity and some people will google what is vedanta chat gpt <laughs> nowadays even chat gpt can teach vedanta <laughs> so they get some answer in youtube so it will specify the casual curiosity but vividesha is not like a casual curiosity for knowledge it is an intense longing for atmajnana and when the true jignasa happens one cannot one cannot 
prioritize anything else at the cost of atma jnana vedanta sara describes such a student deepta shira jala rashi miva deepta shira when the head is burning what will you search you will search for water my head is scorching and i want to find some water where i will i'll be able to put off the fire put off the heat it will be the earnestness of a true seeker and until one gets such an earnestness karma is the sadhana aru rukshor muner yogam karma karanam uchyate yogarudhasya tasyaiva shamah karanam uchyate therefore we should know the role of karma the place of karma in the scheme of sadhana so there is no other way than jnana this fact is clarified in this mantra and the same mantra also talks about vidvadanubhava the direct knowledge of ad atmajnan we will continue in the next session om purnamadah purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate ओम शांत शांत शांति ही हरि ही ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ही ओम